It is in Africa's dark heart, the Congo Basin, that we find the gentler tributary of our primate legacy. Takayoshi Kano has led the research here in Wamba Zaire for the past 22 years. He comes here in search of the second little-known species of chimpanzee. Sugarcane is a sweet lure used to call down the elusive bonobo. Dr. Kano and his associate Chia Hashimoto have discovered that bonobos are quite distinct from the chimps studied by Goodall and Bush. At first glance, they are different. Although they've been called pygmy chimps, they're not smaller, just more slightly built. Hunted elsewhere in Zaire, they're safe here, but wary still. The sugarcane buffet proves irresistible. At ease on two legs, as well as on four, they simply rise up and walk, so their hands are free to carry the cane. Eerily, their long, shapely limbs and upright gait recall our own prehistoric forebears, and their natural two-legged gait is only the first surprise they have in store for us. An impressively stern female enters and snaps a young sapling. Once she picks herself up, she does something entirely surprising for a female chimp. She displays, and the males give her sway. For this is the confident stride of the group's leader, its alpha female, whom Kano has named Haru. Females play a very different role in bonobo society than they do among chimps. The reins of power are shared equally between male and female, held by a strongly bonded group of high-ranking mothers and their adult sons. The son of a dominant female can take great liberties. High-ranking females cooperate to dominate adult males and support their sons in social conflicts. Though tough with other adults, bonobo mothers almost never discipline their babies, even when they steal the food right out of their mouths. Haku, an 11-year-old adolescent male, has lost the loving attention of his mother. As an orphan, he has been forced out to the very fringes of his own community. He's old enough now to begin to make his mark, but without a mother's help, his chance of success is nil. Males stay with their mothers for their entire lives and rely upon their backing. With no mother to back him up, Haku must be wary of Ten, the alpha male. Ken was just about Haku's age when he first rose to power. Lately, Haku has begun trying to assert himself. But Ten had an advantage. His mother was the alpha female before Haru, and he rose to power on her apron strings. He will not tolerate any display from this motherless child. Haku has spirit, but to no avail. Ten's annoyance with this upstart is soothed by one of the other high-ranking males in a surprising way. Instead of fighting, bonobos use sex to diffuse aggression in this genuine make-love-not-war society. 
bonobos have largely divorced sex from its reproductive role. Sex is used by all bonobos, regardless of gender or age, to form bonds and mitigate tension. So Haku is not likely to suffer physical harm, but without family backing, his bid for status is probably doomed. Adolescent females must face a still greater challenge. They leave the group of their birth and visit neighboring groups in search of a new home for the rest of their lives. This female, called Shin, has chosen Dr. Kano's group, but she must first pass muster with the formidable Haru. Female bonobos also use sex to forge strategic alliances with each other. The males, including Ten, readily mate with Shin. But Shin must still win the approval of Haru and the other females. Finally, Shin is embraced by a high-ranking female who will act as her sponsor to the group. Shin settles down to enjoy the sugarcane within the circle of her new community. With equality between the sexes and the substitution of sex for violence, the social lives of bonobos are very different from that of their sibling species, the chimp. <laughs> 